All right, guys, welcome back to Strong Successful Mail. So for today, we're doing the second part of the brother-in-law's version of the story, Manly's cheating wife in a hotel with nothing, blah, blah, blah. And as you all recall, a few hours ago, we were getting really into the dirt about the situation with Ken, the brother-in-law, Phil, who told the first six parts of this whole story about what's going on with his wife, Karen. And we were just getting started with things behind the scenes, supposedly stuff that... Uh, these gals had in their husbands, etc., etc. And I'll pick up where things left off. And again, if you want to know more, just go back and watch all the videos. It'll definitely take you a while. It's a whole saga, but you'll definitely enjoy it. So it continues on where things left off. It says here, uh, I asked Karen, uh, I asked if Karen was sure her father was really Karen and Ellie's biological father. Good question there. Karen said she and Ellie wondered about it as well. Ellie decided to find out for sure. When Karen and Ellie were in college, Ellie stole her father's toothbrush and sent it off with Ellie's mouth swab to check for their DNA. He is their biological father. <clears throat> I don't know if that is a, a sigh of relief for the father or a curse. Think about it. Okay, they're his daughters, but on the other hand, they are his wicked daughters. You know? And of course, Ellie is diabolical enough in college to take the father's toothbrush and get his DNA set up for a test. I'm not at all surprised. I asked Karen why her father put up with the marriage that included Uncle Fred. She said Ellie thought her that his mother, that her mother had something that would cost him everything with just a phone call. Their father's choice was to put up with his wife's behavior or lose the position he loved and had sweated to get. He didn't want to throw away the, all the hard work he did. He put up with it, but neither of them knew what their mother had. Well, I remember in the video before, a couple videos ago, it was mentioned the father had some high-level job with a major security clearance. Something like that. I asked Karen if she agreed with Ellie that her mother had the perfect marriage. Karen says she understood her father didn't like what her mother was doing, but his continuous bad temper made it difficult living in the same house with him. Since he couldn't lead the marriage and he couldn't stop their mother from doing what she wanted, he, just sh he should have just gotten over it. Chill and go with the flow. Everyone would have been much happier. It would have been better for everyone. No one's going to be happy where somebody else is blackmailing you and rubbing it in your face all the time. It's a freaking mess. This guy, he could have found a way to get out of it. Some way, somehow. One thing Phil said in the Essence and Videos is absolutely true. You are marrying the mother when you are married the daughter. Sooner or later, your wife will become her mother. That is 100% true. Anybody here that's married, and there's plenty of married guys watching me, whether you want to admit it or not, know darn freaking well... You saw your, you, you started your current wife, right? You met her when she was younger, all that. You met her mother, and over time, she became more and more like her mother. And in some cases, started looking like her physically. You all know what I'm talking about. Uh, if you're going to marry, find out as much as you can about your future mother-in-law. If you don't get along with your fiancé's mother, you'd probably end up not getting along with your wife. I wish I would have known that before I married Karen. As SSM says, know the family your girlfriend comes from. Her family dynamic might just end up becoming your family dynamic. Yes, 100%. I asked Karen how they started to exchange boyfriends. Now we're getting into the dirt, guys. Karen said that both Karen and Ellie always had boyfriends. None of them lasted very long when they were in high school. When Ellie knew Karen was tiring of a boyfriend, ready to end things with, her, with him, Ellie said she wanted to try him out before Karen dumped him. Ellie never wanted a relationship with Karen's exes. Just some fun. And the excitement of deceiving the guy. There you go. High school. I guarantee you these two were pulling bullshit when they were little kids. Now, obviously they weren't doing these things, but they doing, they were doing other games. I mean, these two must have watched The Parent Trap 5,000 times when they were kids and took it to a whole new level. The X rated, X, triple X rated version of The Parent Trap. And the excitement of deceiving the guy. Karen said she didn't care. She was finished with the guy anyway. Karen said that she didn't participate. Ellie slept with Karen's boyfriends. Karen did not sleep with Ellie's. Yeah, sure, honey. Remember, this is the conversation they're having where she's going to open up about everything, be so honest, to rebuild their marriage. Well, she's already full of shit. But Ellie persuaded Karen to go on, on a date with one of Ellie's boyfriends. Karen told Ellie she was going to break up with Karen's current boyfriend that night. Ellie said she wanted to hook up with the guy so she could go out with him posing as Karen, if Karen wanted. Ellie could break up with the guy for her. 
Ellie will hook up with him and then break him up with him while posing as Karen. Anybody else out there is confused as I am? Ellie, Karen, Karen, Ellie, hooking up. Jesus Christ. Ellie loved breaking up with guys. She liked to tell the guys that their S-word inadequacies were the reason for their breakup. Karen said it was entertained to listen to Ellie describe the boyfriend's reactions to being told he's no good in bed, that he was way too small. See? Sociopath. She loves messing with guys' emotions and minds. Only there was a problem with Ellie going out with the guy that Karen wanted to break up with. Ellie couldn't get out of a date with her own boyfriend. Ellie was supposed to meet her boyfriend's parents, something Ellie said she was dreading doing. There was a perfect solution. Karen would meet the parents as Ellie and, El- and Ellie would sleep with Karen's boyfriend and then break up with him pretending to be Karen. And this is where it really uh, becomes a new thing when they start putting on the big show for different people. Karen dreaded breaking up with guys. You never know what he's going to do. If Ellie would break up with the guy posing as Karen, then they had a deal. Karen didn't have to sleep with Ellie's boyfriend. Just spent a couple hours at dinner with him and his parents pretending she was Ellie. No big deal. Karen ended up liking Ellie's guy and slept with him after their dinner. It wasn't like she was being unfaithful to her current boyfriend. She just hadn't had the chance to end it with him just yet. Yeah, nice nice way to cover that one up. That was Ellie's fault. Beside, the guy she was going to dump was enjoying himself with Ellie. Before Ellie got rid of him for Karen. Did she feel bad about sleeping with Ellie's boyfriend? No. Ellie slept with Karen's boyfriend. Karen wanted to continue seeing Ellie's boyfriend, but that created problems. First, he was Ellie's boyfriend. Second, she was posing as Ellie when she met his parents and slept with him. How was she going to turn back into Karen and continue with him as Karen without knowing that she had posed as Ellie? How was she going to change back to Karen to be with this guy? Again, my mind is going around in circles reading this back and forth shit. The first problem really wasn't the first problem really wasn't one. Ellie always had a main guy, but one or two side guys. Shocker. She was willing to give give this guy she was willing to give this guy to Karen. Ellie used up guys like she used up tissues. He was just another tissue she could throw away. But Ellie said Karen now indebted to Ellie big time. So Karen's making out to be that Ellie is the worse one of the two. You know, you, you can, and she's obviously telling this story to her husband, Ken, here. Karen is just as bad. I'm mean, okay. Obviously, you're going to have one that's worse than the other. But still, Karen's bad, too. Very bad. But, of course, she's throwing her sister under the bus. The second was more problematic. How to be with this guy as Karen and not Ellie. Ellie told Karen that she'd break it off with him, but introduce him to Karen first. Ellie, Karen, and the guy could hang out together, maybe even a three-way or hookup with the two with the guy. And then Ellie would bow out and leave Karen to it. And that's what they did. The three of them started to hang out. They had a three-way. Then Ellie told the guy he had cheated on Ellie with Karen and forced Ellie into a three-way. Ellie told him she didn't want to be with that guy who did those things, and they were done. It goes to a whole new level that these girls were pulling this crap, and then they were engaging in three ways, and then all in the same bed. Again, you can see why people think this is a bunch of bullshit. Fair enough, I get it. But crazier things have happened. When Ellie told Karen that she had told the guy she was breaking up with him because he was cheating on her, Ellie and Karen couldn't stop laughing. See? They love playing games. I asked if Karen had other three ways with Ellie. She looked down but nodded. How many times, I asked. Karen said a few times, but it ended after the guys from the gym. Oh, okay. The guys from the gym who were Phil's employees. They stopped coming to the gym. They were the, they were the last of the group SEX adventures. Oh, well, wow. that absolves you of everything. So quite regularly, the sisters here would engage in three ways. Karen said the three ways with Ellie were no big deal. That's the problem. She was having SEX with a guy. She didn't see that having Ellie in the room watching or participating was really much different than having SEX alone with just the guy. Are you out of your mind? It was still just SCX. Can you see how the whole pair bonding thing is certainly warranted here? That if a gal has relations with so many guys or so many partners, it gets to the point that it's just like this. There's no possible way she could have any bond with anybody, anybody literally. And the whole uh, dismissal attitude towards SCX right here. Uh, it was just SCX. 
Maybe she would have been embarrassed if there was someone else other than Ellie. Karen says she didn't care if Ellie was there. Most of the time it was more fun with Ellie. She was very inventive. She's your fucking sister. I asked if Karen and Ellie ever had SCX together. This is what we're all wondering. Karen looked at me if I was crazy and said, of course not. She said they would kiss some, but just on the mouth. <laughs> Number one, you can't blame for asking this. Number two, I don't believe that there wasn't other things going on. But they've been doing that since they were little girls. When Karen and Ellie were seven or eight, they were just goofing around when their mother walked in on them. Karen and Ellie were kissing. What did I say really about this stuff started when they were little girls? Their mother just smiled, told them, have fun, and left. If it was any other mother, I would not be believing this. If there was anything wrong with that they were doing, their mother would have said something. Karen and Ellie continued to goof around. Karen said the most they ever did was kiss each other to do some touching. When they were in their, their early teens, they would sleep in the same bed, kiss, touch parts at each other. But that was just exploring and the sister pretending she was the other fantasy boyfriend. All girls do that. They were not doing anything wrong. It was fun getting off together. I don't know, guys. Are you glad you stuck around for this part or sickened? I'm fucking sickened. They did kiss each other and do the things when involved in a three-way, but it was mostly to excite the guy. The guys who they met at the gym on Saturdays insisted sometimes that the twins put on a show before they paired off with the guys. It was exciting to have the guys watching them, and sometimes Karen and Ellie got carried away. The boys would watch, laugh, and cheer them on. But Karen and Ellie never had SAX with each other. Never. Well, you pretty much did everything else. I asked what, got ca what carried away meant. Karen, embarrassed, said, just some fingers and some tongues. Just playing around, no big deal. It was more or less what they used to do when they were teens. Karen repeated, they were doing nothing wrong. Okay. I said these were Phil's employees, right? And Karen nodded. Did they ever talk about Phil? Once they asked if Ellie and Karen did this stuff with their husbands. Ellie said, absolutely not. One of them said they should tell Phil what he was missing. Maybe they'd tell Phil about the service they were providing and ask for a raise. What a bunch of assholes. Ellie grabbed his jaw on one hand, got in his face, and told him that she was an attorney. If they told Phil or anyone else about what she about this, she'd sue their asses until they had nothing left. Even standing there completely naked, Ellie was very intimidating. Ellie sure loves to do the I'm going to sue you thing, huh? I asked what, what the guy did. Carrie said the guy picked Ellie up, threw her in the bed, straddled Ellie on, uh, on his knees near her mouth, and told her to get to work. They all laughed, and Ellie went to work on him, but there was no more discussions about their husbands. He says, now back to the boyfriend trading. Ellie would insist that Karen take on some of Ellie's dates. That freed up Ellie to see other guys openly. Ellie's guys thought they were Ellie, but it was Karen. And Ellie continued to pretend she was Karen to test drive Karen's boyfriend. So, like I said earlier, because I know Ken here seems convinced that Phil knew all along, these girls had this master... Not only were they swapping boyfriends to have relations with them, but they were also pretending to be each other. Again, these two must have watched The Parent Trap 5,000 times as kids and had it down to a science. This is how they were able to fool each other. Or fool, fool Ken and Phil. I asked Karen <clears throat> when she stopped sleeping with Ellie's boyfriends during these swaps. The tears began. Well, it's about time we got to the waterworks here. Karen said that Ellie made sure she slept with all of Karen's boyfriends. For Ellie, sleeping with a guy was as necessary as eating. <laughs> a lot of eating going on. Ellie always slept with the guys on their dates. Ellie slept with some of Karen's boyfriends even before Karen did. So if Karen went out on a date with, as Ellie, the guy expected to end up in bed. Ellie pushed Karen to have SCX with Ellie's boyfriends. <clears throat> if Karen didn't sleep with them, they would know something was wrong. Karen and Ellie didn't want to get caught. There was nothing Karen could do. Yes, Karen's the poor victim here. Of course she is. And I bet you if Ellie told the st same story to Phil, maybe Karen would be the villain. Karen said as far as she knew, none of the guys ever caught on. I asked, how was that possible? Karen said they went to the hairdresser and got bikini waxes together. They were as identical as they could be. They shared the same clothes, same perfume. They studied their bodies together in the mirror to see if there was any differences. When they switched identities, they even exchanged IDs and cell phones. 
If one had a bruise or scratch on or cut that prevented them from being the other twin, they'd just wait, wait it out. They did not want to get caught. I think this part is the only part that's true. Them mastering their skill of pretending to be each other. Guys, ever seen the movie The Prestige with Hugh Jackman and Christian Bale? And if you didn't see the movie, cover your ears. I want to reveal spoilers. But in the movie, they're all magicians. It's taking place at the turn of the century. And Christian Bale, he has this one amazing act as a magician and nobody could figure out how he could do it well as it turns out again spoilers that christian bale had a twin and they pretend to be each other to pull off this trick and they lived a whole life pretending to be each other and christian bale was married and they would swap and do all that to you know what i mean sounds just like this i asked why they all went they went to all this trouble they could both have been they could have both had any guys they wanted. They didn't have to pretend to be the sister. Karen implied that the, the game was very, very exciting. They wanted, they were addicted. It became addicted to the thrill. See, it was a big game to them. They were excited. <clears throat> Karen said the biggest fight she ever had with Ellie was when Ellie wanted to sleep with me. This was shortly after Karen and I became serious during her sophomore year. Karen said she knew almost immediately that I was the one she wanted to spend her life with. She fell in love with me almost at first sight. Yeah, sure. Again, this is Karen telling the story trying to win you back. To get in your good graces. Ellie, as always, wanted to be wanted to test drive Karen's new boyfriend. I was the one Karen loved and was going to marry, so Karen said no. Ellie said yes. Karen was emphatic. No. Emphatic. No. Emphatic. No. That's what I meant to say. They were in the dorm room. Ellie told Karen she was going to have SCX to me right now. I was in my dorm room. Right. Ellie left the room, and Karen ran after her. Karen grabbed Ellie by the hair, and they, they both went down, pulling hair and punching each other in the hallway. People gathered around to watch. That would have been fun to watch. Now I'm going to say this. In twins or any relationship, there's always a more dominant one. I, obviously, Ellie is the dominant one in this relationship, and she's the more villainous of the two. But they're both evil. And remember, Karen's telling the story trying to get back in Ken's good graces here. Uh, Karen looked at me and said that she and Ellie had a physical had, had have had physical fights since they were little. They agreed long ago, no punching or scratching to the faces in these fights. The bruises from the punching and scratches would mean they could no longer be identical. Karen said she punched Ellie in the face so Ellie could not pretend that Karen was me, with, with me. The bruises in Ellie's face would give her away and I would know it was not Karen. Ellie was so angry that she intentionally pulled Karen's t-shirt almost completely off. The t-shirt was all that Karen was wearing and Ellie knew it. That made Karen furious. Probably the worst fight they had in years. The first one they had in public since high school. They are eventually separated. I'd love to see this cat fight. Ellie was so angry that she intentionally pulled Karen's t-shirt almost completely off. The t-shirt was all that Karen was wearing and Kelly knew. I read that part. My bad. It's your only guys. Bear with me here. Uh, Ellie and Karen did not talk about this fight for over a week. That was common between the sisters. They'd fight, stop talking to each other, and then one would contact the other and both would act as if nothing had ever happened. As if there had been no fight. Back to loving sisters. I can never understand that. Can someone explain that? I can explain that. I had personal training clients years ago that were twin sisters. Very wealthy family. Very spoiled. And those two would be as close as can be thick as thieves and then they would start fighting with the stupidest shit known to man it got really ugly they wouldn't talk for a while we do the workout separately and then just like that they'd patch things up back to normal and i learned from their mother they had been doing this since childhood so clearly it must be a girl twin thing i guess or i could be wrong but, but i saw the same i hear i know they were getting fist fights but they would have long periods they wouldn't talk and then boom back together when they were talking again, Ellie told Karen that Karen should tell me about their past boyfriend swapping. It was, only, it was only right if Karen and me were going to spend our lives together. Full honesty from the start. Does Karen want Ellie to tell me? It might be easier for Karen if Ellie told me about Karen's S-word past. Ellie would pose as Karen, and I would think about, about it if it was Karen being so honest. Ellie would, would tell me every detail. Karen didn't want me to know about her past. <laughs> That's as common as can be. Of course you wouldn't be with her if you knew about her past. That would be the end of my relationship with her. She was afraid Ellie was serious. The threat was enough. Ellie always got what she wanted sooner or later anyway. 
Ellie began to sleep with me and Karen's acceptance. Karen was wailing so hard now that she could not talk. I just watched her cry. Yeah, poor her. I, 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 the only thing I'm convinced here in this whole thing is, yes, Ellie is the dominant sister, and Ellie is the more vicious of the two. But they're both rotten. Come on here. And, of course, Karen wants you back. <clears throat> when she was calmer, I told Karen to continue. The boyfriend swapping went on. Ellie still needed a stand-in for her guys when she was with me. Karen had no choice but to be Ellie and Ellie's boyfriends. Yeah, no choice, huh? I asked Karen if she was, was with uh, other guys in college beside Ellie's boyfriends after she and I started dating. Did she hook up with random other guys, not just Ellie's boyfriends? You guess the answer, why? Karen said, what's the difference if it was with Ellie's guys or someone else? They were just all guys. See? This is their attitude. Guys are just... You know, I heard somebody once say, why girls don't play video games? Or why most girls don't play video games? And the response was, because they have guys to play games with. She didn't care about any of them, and she was just with some other guy. Ellie was with me, making me happy. No one got hurt because no one knew it was all good. Yeah, well, people are getting hurt. This continued when Ellie started to date Phil and throughout their marriage. And throughout my marriage. Up until just after Karen thought she was pregnant with her daughter. The husband swapping stopped, but the cheating never did. Not for either of them. I asked Karen if Phil knew about this from the beginning. Karen said that she never figured out what Phil knew. When Karen was uh, with Phil, he either thought she was Ellie or pretended to. Karen sometimes thought Phil knew it. It was Karen, but she figured Phil got turned on by the game. Karen uh, would pretend that she was, was, she was Ellie, and Phil would, would pretend she was Ellie. Exciting for them. So here we go. Karen's making out to me. Yeah, he probably knew it was me. She thought Phil knew because he wanted Karen to do things in bed that Karen was sure he never asked Ellie to do. Here we go with that part. Remember that part? At least when Karen and Ellie talked about SCX with her husbands, Ellie never mentioned her and Phil doing this sort of thing. Stuff Karen had never done. Stuff Karen would never dream of doing. Too gross and it hurts. So you remember in the first part where Phil was chiming in before this part and said, "Yes, I was doing things with her and uh, you know I, with both with my wife and Karen, but obviously Karen, but obviously my wife didn't let Karen know about that." When Karen and Ellie compared notes about the two husbands, Karen told Ellie about Phil's S-word demands. Ellie looked surprised and asked, "Phil really wanted you to do that? I didn't know he was such a perv." As Ellie was completely shocked by this. But Ellie just wanted to really know if Karen did the stuff Phil wanted her to do. I asked Karen what Phil wanted her to do. She gave me the details. I'll spare you those details. Dude, this long ass story here, and, and we don't get the details? We have to all speculate what acts were going on? Okay. He says, just understand it's the kind of thing you can find only on PORN sites. I asked Karen if she did what Phil wanted. She was crying so hard she couldn't talk. Of course she was. Her hands were covering her face. After a while, Karen nodded. More than once, another nod. Whatever Phil wanted. After a few seconds, more nodding. And that, gentlemen, is where I'm going to end part two. And we're going to do part three in a few hours around uh, evening. Where you get to have this whole thing wrapped up. More details about this crazy uh, story and crazy family here. And the end of Ken's part here. So again, Ken, I appreciate you writing this in. This took a lot of work. And I uh, wish you would have told us what was really going on. But fair enough. We'll, we can all speculate. So guys, this is freaking nuts. And you can see why this story has gone on so long. And for you guys thinking about marriage, I'm going to tell you one thing. Don't date any twins. Don't get serious about any twins. Now, all jokes aside, I'm going to a, a benefit of the doubt that most twin girls aren't going to pull this type of crap. But the point is... As I do know, I did know twins, and let me tell you, they were in their own little world, you know? And maybe it's a girl thing, I don't know. And I can't imagine those two doing things in the story, but you never freaking know. I love what I do. I love reading these stories, and I love helping guys, and it's always something crazy around the bend in these stories that come into me. It's, it's very entertaining. And and I don't mean to sound like uncaring because I feel bad for these guys. I really do. But good freaking Lord. But anyhow, guys, part three later on, a few hours in the early evening. And uh, definitely get your popcorn and beer ready for the finale. And be sure to like the video, share with your friends, and subscribe. I'll catch you next time.